this video has been a long time coming. In my more than five years now of making video essays, I've covered some of the greatest and most memorable survival horror games of all time. This might even be how you found me in the first place. But there is one much requested cult classic series that I've always been meaning to get around to, yet never have, and that I consider to be one of my personal all-time favorites. Fatal Frame. Now, Fatal Frame, or Project Zero as it's known in Europe, or simply Zero in Japan, is definitely a lesser known survival horror series, especially when compared with big names like Resident Evil and Silent Hill. Yet I always felt that this was a shame, since when considered alongside their contemporaries, the Fatal Frame games are every bit as well designed, engaging to play, and scary enough to keep you up all night. And most importantly, their story and setting is intriguing and meaningful as it is rooted in a fascinating backdrop of folklore and mythology. The Fatal Frame games are considered to be some of the most frightening interactive experiences ever made. The puzzles and encounters are taut and suspenseful. The environments atmospheric and haunting and enemies fearsome and unpredictable in combat, and unlike any video game adversary you've faced before. The series maintains a focused, almost single-minded commitment to a design philosophy based around player disempowerment. All of these elements combine to make the game timeless. Even today, the original Fatal Frame is just as pulse-pounding as when you picked up the DualShock controller in 2001. And even if you've memorized every single encounter and story beat, the game still doesn't lose one bit of its sublime, foreboding and iconically spine-chilling atmosphere. While this series was fairly well received in Japan, it had a more mixed reception in the West. Despite being one of the most distinctive and memorable survival horror series of all time, these games just didn't sell that well. And the series has been on development hiatus since 2015. So with that in mind, let's revisit the first Fatal Frame, one of the three games of the original trilogy for the PlayStation 2. We're going to delve into the early 2000s J-horror fever, Unravel the spooky folk tales and urban legends that inspire this series. And explore how the first game's design innovations gave rise to one of the most intriguing horror series of all time. Lurking deep within the darkest recesses of this haunted mansion lies the true folkloric terror of Fatal Frame, and a metaphor for the series itself. No matter what we do, the past refuses to stay buried, and the pursuit of hidden knowledge can unleash spine-chilling nightmares of times long past. If the original Resident Evil established itself as a B-movie romp through its campy haunted house scenario, <laughs> Fatal Frame is the psychological horror twist on the same concept. In the game's opening sequence, the alleged protagonist Mafuyu Hinasaki goes missing in Himura Mansion, a mysterious cursed estate sprawling atop the forested hills on the outskirts of Tokyo where he's investigating the disappearance of Jinsei Takamine, a researcher and folklorist who studies supernatural tales. As his sister Miku, you take it upon yourself to search for your brother in the abandoned house after not having heard from him in days. For seasoned J-horror fans, this probably sounds like pretty tropey stuff, and there's good reason for that. The first Fatal Frame game arrived in 2001, just when Japanese horror cinema's popularity was exploding all over the world. This was when Western audiences got their first taste of the new wave of Eastern horror movies that have since become legendary staples of the genre. Films like Ringu, Yuri, 
you on. Dark water. And one of my personal all-time favorites, Cairo. All of which still hold up today as true masterpieces of the genre. And Fatal Frame self-consciously revels in the tropes of J-horror, placing them front and center. Ropes and ritual strangulation. Long-haired shrine maidens dressed in white. A seemingly mundane residence hiding dread and even apocalyptic, long-forgotten secrets. And the grisly yet grounded depictions of psychological terror that is the trademark of Japanese horror cinema. But these tropes aren't just used for surface-level shock value. Japanese horror in all its forms, from literature to film to, yes, video games, is intimately bound up in the country's folkloric traditions. Japan's folklore is famous for tales of mournful ghosts, deadly curses and blood-soaked hauntings, many of which stretch back hundreds of years into the country's ancient history. These historical elements form the core of Fatal Frame's narrative and mechanics. The result is an evolution of the survival horror experience, one that was wildly unique from its contemporaries and hugely influential to future horror games, both Eastern and Western. Because ultimately, Fatal Frame is a game about the power of stories. Narratively and mechanically, the player's confrontation with mysterious ancient puzzles and vengeful spirits is also a confrontation with folklore itself. A battle with the horror that is brought to life when we pursue and challenge ancient tales and forgotten knowledge. Initially, when marketing Fatal Frame in the US and Europe, Tecmo promoted the game as based on a true story. In interviews with gaming publications, series producer Makoto Shibata hinted that the game was based on real-life stories about a grim mansion in the hills of Japan's Kanto region where spirits roam the grounds and a deadly curse waits to ensnare anyone foolish enough to venture near. The development team gave comments to several different gaming publications, and like a good urban legend, the story changed slightly with each retelling. The tale goes something like this. In an area outside Tokyo, there lies a mansion in which it's said seven people were murdered in a grisly manner. On the same property, there lie three detached residences that surround the mansion, all of which are rumored to have ties to the mansion's troubled past. It's said there is an underground network of tunnels that lay beneath the premises, but nobody knows who made these tunnels, or what purpose they served. Many inexplicable phenomenons have been reported occurring on the property. Bloody handprints have been found spattered all over the walls. Spirits have been spotted on the premises, even in broad daylight. A narrow stairway leads to an attic where a spirit-sealed talisman is rumored to be locked away. Men have sought this talisman, only to be found later with their bodies broken and rope marks around their wrists. There's a crumbling old statue of a woman in a kimono, but its head is missing. If you take a photo of a certain window, a young girl can be seen in the developed picture. These incidents have provoked fear in the people of Tokyo, and many believe that those who live near this area will become cursed. The deaths of those seven people are unexplained to this day. Well, if you guessed this was a work of fiction, you guessed right. We made this one up. The narrative of the first Fatal Frame game, and the following games in the series as well, is really an amalgamation of several different and unrelated Japanese urban legends and ghost stories. It's these key details lifted from urban legends that make up the experience of playing the game. You will brave the curse of the rope, hunt down ancient ceiling talismans, and snap pictures of ghosts that can't be seen with the naked eye. But the use of these mythical folkloric elements in the Western marketing campaign is more than just set dressing. It also points to the developer's savvy intuition about the game's core themes. 
they understood that non-Japanese players probably won't be as familiar with the country's deep folkloric traditions as the domestic audience. And so, the based-on-a-true-story marketing tag subtly encourages the audience to approach the game with a very specific mindset. As an explorer, a researcher, and most of all, a folklorist. Someone who uncovers, records, and interprets past events for the benefit of posterity. Rope-binding rituals and shrine maidens are tropes that are very culturally specific to Japan and don't exactly translate well. But a spooky ghost story passed down through the years about a terrifying, run-down house out in the middle of the forest? That's damn near universal. After the game opens up with a brief introductory sequence where you play as Mafuyu, a bishonen right out of central casting, he goes missing and you instead assume the role of his sister Miku. As you explore Himura Mansion, you're set upon by vengeful ghosts who are intent on draining your life force and cursing you to wander the halls for eternity yourself. The only way to even see them and defend yourself against them is through the viewfinder of a mystical heirloom passed down through generations of your family, the Camera Obscura. Initially, the developer's plans for the game was to let the player be totally defenseless against ghosts. Your only choice would have been either to stun them with your flashlight or to run away entirely. But as the development process went on, the designers realized that by offering the player an unconventional and limited form of defense, they could make the scares that much more visceral and immediate, and ground it into the metaphor of the game. And so the camera obscura became both the narrative and mechanical core of the Fatal Frame franchise. Once the concept was realized, the developers quickly found the core experience they wanted the game to convey. Controlling the fear until the very last second and defeating it. And this just so happens to be where the game got its name. By training your camera's viewfinder on the ghost and staying patient until it's fully charged and then waiting to take a picture until the very moment the ghost attacks, when you execute the zero shot or fatal frame. The more you place yourself in danger, the more effective your attack becomes. As you delve into the mansion's depths, you slowly peel away layer upon layer of the story, uncovering a mysterious and terrifying curse into which you are, likewise, drawn deeper and deeper. For generations, the residents of Himura Mansion have guarded the Hell Gate that lies deep below the estate's ancestral shrine. Every ten years, a rope shrine maiden must be sacrificed as part of the strangling ritual in order to maintain the seal on the demon mound and prevent evil spirits from overwhelming the land. But 150 years before the events of the game, the strangling ritual failed. An apocalyptic entity dubbed the Calamity unfolded and the dread entity Malice escaped the demon mound. A dark curse descended upon Himura Mansion, killing thousands in the region and leaving madness and destruction in its wake. Since that day, the estate has been haunted by vengeful spirits who seek to entangle unwary visitors in this curse. For the player, the Camera Obscura is their first and last line of defense against these hauntings, and the ultimate tool to help them unravel the mysteries of this ancient house. But the true genius of this design is how the camera itself acts as a mechanical literalization of the narrative's themes. Through the camera you can observe the hidden forces that lurk just beneath the surface of the mundane world. And by using the camera to take snapshots of them, to record what you see, you are able to defend yourself against the eldritch forces that seek to consume you. The horror of folklore is the horror of superstition. Events that cannot be rationally explained are frightening because they offer us so little hard evidence by which we can comprehend them. It's a simple truism that stretches back to the beginning of human history. The less we know about something, the more frightening it is. Through the act of playing the game, 
by observing your surroundings, taking notes and uncovering the mysteries of the mansion, you are engaging with the folklore of Fatal Frame. Through research, discovery and careful observation, you can rob these myths of their power, the power of the unknown, and by that, fight back. The Camera Obscura makes this literal for the player. By capturing these ghosts with your camera and viewfinder, you drain their health bar, sapping their life force. And as you wend your way through the mansion's labyrinthine hallways and grounds, you'll also find expository documents like notebooks and diaries, newspaper clippings and audio recordings. The mini narratives contained in these documents are all strange and disturbing in their own way. Historical accounts of the disaster that doomed the estate, first-person narratives of the ever-deepening madness of those afflicted by the curse, and plaintive cries for help from the poor souls who found themselves lost within the depths of the mansion. Other notes recount the researchers and folklorists, and the game explicitly identifies them as folklorists, who studied the mansion and the dark rituals connected to it. In most cases, these documents are connected to individual characters whose backgrounds are critically important to the overarching narrative. The game mostly keeps the spoken dialogue to minimum, and it's up to the player to piece together the plot via these found documents and environmental clues. Like the photographic hints that you'll uncover with the aid of the camera obscura, these documents and clues don't just illuminate the larger narrative. They're also how the player discovers the solutions to puzzles and the weaknesses of key enemies, up to and including the final boss of the game. And critically, the game provides absolutely zero get it, handholding to indicate that a document you've collected contains useful information, say for some red numbers here and there. It's left entirely up to the player to piece together the narrative puzzle through the evidence you've assembled. In other words, Fatal Frame was a pioneering early example of the power of environmental storytelling, many years before we even had a sense of environmental storytelling as a best practice for narrative design in games. Survival horror was itself still a relatively new concept in 2001, and yet Fatal Frame arrived to push this still young genre into an entirely fresh direction. The game's greater emphasis on exploration, discovery and puzzle solving through that is a sharp contrast to the more straightforward combat and resource management loops of other, more renowned survival horror titles. And it is this act of interpretation in Fatal Frame, the quest to uncover the truth behind terrifying and mystical events and piece together the story bit by bit, that illustrates both the power and the danger of folklore. The emphasis on archaeology, folklore and interpretation is what makes Fatal Frame such a singular and unique experience in the realm of survival horror, even as we come up with the 20 year anniversary of its release. The player must become not just an incidental observer to the narrative, but an active participant. One who pieces together an interpretation of the history and then works to resolve it. The fact that it somewhat fell off the radar in recent years is truly a shame, because it's hard to overstate just how important and influential a piece of gaming history Fatal Frame really is. It's kind of like, ah jeez, you guys, you gotta make me do it, aren't you? A full decade before Dark Souls earned acclaim for its particular brand of what I like to call archaeological storytelling, Fatal Frame was essentially doing the same thing on the humble PS2. Too many times, lore and codices are shoehorned into games as a kind of narrative bloat that gives the player plenty of material to read through, but is entirely superfluous to the experience of actually playing the game. Fatal Frame incorporates lore in a way that makes it central to the experience of both playing and understanding the game's narrative. The act of piecing together the tale is a narrative puzzle in and of itself that drastically increases suspension of disbelief as players become part of the folkloric history of the game's world itself. The story of Fatal Frame is, at its core, a story about the essence of folklore, 
how lore gets crafted, passed on over the ages, and then rediscovered and interpreted. Within the fiction of the game, we see urban legends come to life before our eyes, along with folklorist characters who attempt to interpret these stories before ultimately falling prey to them. These narrative elements pull you into a deep and engrossing story where mechanics and lore form a greater whole, one that just so happens to be intimately connected to the real world, even though it isn't exactly based on a true story. By the climax of Fatal Frame, folklore itself has been vindicated. The legend of Himura Mansion is no longer the stuff of books and cultural theory, no longer the mere superstitions of those who dwell on the outskirts of civilization. Local wisdom, lore, is reframed as the only way to combat the supernatural forces that would otherwise overpower the living world. Ultimately then, the question that Fatal Frame poses to players is not about future versus past or science versus tradition or even the city versus countryside duality inherent to the phrase urban legend. The true question that Fatal Frame asks is much simpler and potentially far more frightening. What would you do if lore wasn't just lore? What if these frightening stories we tell ourselves could really come to life? Folklore can be dangerous knowledge, dealing as it does with supernatural truth, which in turn makes folklorists people who wield a dangerous power. All across the world, folkloric figures have been respected and loathed in equal measure for their command of hidden knowledge. The local hedge witch is the first person that the townspeople will turn to for their ailments, but also the first to be put to the stake when an unexplainable plague ravages the livestock. Just as it reinterpreted the urban legends of Tokyo, Fatal Frame takes these larger principles of folklore and reinterprets them through the medium of a video game. And this act, this reinterpreting and retelling, makes Fatal Frame a kind of folklore unto itself. The earliest kinds of lore were passed down through word of mouth and hearsay, and the Fatal Frame games likewise reinterpret and retell Japanese urban legends to the player, preserving these stories in their own form. By playing these games, the player becomes an active participant in folklore, and this experience is made all the more powerful by just how great a game Fatal Frame is. After playing it, you almost certainly won't forget the legend of Himuru Mansion. It sticks in your memory, lurking in the crevices of your consciousness, waiting for the right time to re-emerge, just like good urban legend should. Because we all know there is great power in stories, whether they come from a book or a video game. The power to save and protect, and also the power to destroy. Hey there, thank you so much for watching. Before you leave, make sure to check out this special thank you bonus video here, in which we're playing a game of ghost tag to hunt down and exercise my Patreon backers across Himuro Mansion. So thank you all once again, and yeah. Monsters of the Week, Until next time, ta-ta!